Missions in Star Citizen, up until now, for the large part, have been more a test to see if we can do something and we can do something reliably. Can we spawn an object at a location? Can we create a mission that causes that object to spawn? And then check if a player goes and picks up that object and then retrieves it and brings it back to another location. Can we spawn an NPC in response to a mission at a certain location that a player has to kill or help? This has been what missions have been in Star Citizen for a long time. And I know that there are certain people out there who have expressed disappointment <laughs> in these missions. And, um, and I always kind of found it amusing because some of us understood that this is CIG ticking boxes. And it wasn't until we got missions like Rescue the 890 Jump or Xeno Threat that um, we were actually starting to see what CIG had planned and what CIG was doing. Now, of course, the Pyro base assault slash bunker assault mission, uh, you could call it, kind of showcases a little bit more of what CIG is doing. And so some people might look at this and say, oh, rejoice, rejoice. This is it. This is this is the way that it's going to be. Not quite. A mission like this is excellent. It's great. Um, certainly people who have played Deus Ex or recently Cyberpunk 2077, we like missions where depending on what skills or what equipment you bring or what types of gameplay that you like to focus on, there are many different ways to solve the puzzle. And I'm sure that there are people out there who would think that this is what all the missions should be. But the truth of it is, is this is very time consuming to produce. This is very difficult for game developers to produce en masse for every single mission that you want to do. And you have to create a lot of missions. You have to create a lot of this work for players to do in your game. Think about the reputation system. What meaning does the reputation system have if you don't have to do anything other than, you know, donate money to earn reputation, right? Reputations are another kind of tricky thing because they have to be meaningful to the point where a player would willingly grind them out. They have to be difficult enough so that not everybody is going to be able to just do it in one day. But at the same time, you also have to make it so that no players feel compelled or forced to grind that that you know that reputation out. And that is a very difficult balance to strike. But when you think about the, the sheer amount of missions that you may have to complete to level up a reputation and many of you have done this in many MMOs myself included it can be a fairly time consuming process and hopefully when you get to the end of it the rewards are worthwhile but the sheer volume of things that you're going to have to do in Star Citizen pretty much says that this is going to be kind of a, a special occasion thing or a not every day sort of thing this is going to be some unique situations because not every mission can be crafted in this way. It's, it's very difficult to kind of keep producing these types of puzzles, more or less, and keep them fresh and keep them unique and keep them interesting without them becoming so repetitive. It's like, okay, look for a door. Okay, look for a box that's malfunctioning, that sort of thing. And that's kind of one of the problems that in the later levels certainly infected uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Gameplay and you know, stability issues aside, after a while, players either got so powerful that they would just destroy everything in the area in seconds, or doing the missions themselves became, even though they were all unique, became repetitive because you knew the formula and you just went boom, 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 do the thing. Okay, hand it in. Goodbye. Thanks for my money. However, when Tony Zervek was speaking about the systems that they are bringing online bit by bit into the persistent universe, this is where you're going to find the bulk of your gameplay. It isn't going to be at a discrete mission location like 
go to you know the area highlighted on your map kill 15 orcs come back to me you know and i'll give you your reward you're you're going to be going out and looking for areas where let's say you're enforcing the law you're working for law enforcement you're a bounty hunter and you're trying to kill as many npc pirates as possible you're going to go to areas where because of the circumstances recently in the game you know minerals being mined in that area or cargo runs being completed maybe there's a lot or maybe there's less pirates there and you're going to dynamically shift to those locations and hunt it's going to be somewhat similar of an experience if you've ever played any of the old world war ii u-boat games where you have to hunt allied convoys heading across the Atlantic. You know, when you have to go down, use your sonar to see if you can detect a distant convoy or you're up on the bridge looking for smoke on the horizon, that sort of thing. This is going to be the day in and day out of the Star Citizen pilot's experience, especially if you're going out there hunting NPCs or other players, pirates, whatever. This is going to be your bread and butter. Star Citizen really is built around the idea of being a, a dynamic living universe, right? And it isn't really stuck within the framework of I have to advance a storyline. Like if you think about it from a Final Fantasy or a World of Warcraft point of view, you get the new expansion and it's like, oh, here's the big bad guy and you have to get up to level 70, level 80, 85, whatever to get up to the point where you can go and attack the big baddies castle and take the loot there's obviously multiple stories going on on the side what are we going to do with this person what are we going to do with that person and the leveling up experience and the mission experience serves to tell those narratives and tell those stories but the narratives within star citizen are driven by the players you know there isn't a a discreet like oh this person is the hero and over multiple expansions you're going to discover what their motivations are or learn more about them there may be a few distinct characters that you touch base with you know like pinky tabasco or any of the other npcs like rudo that we've met in stanton and some of these things may continue but it's never going to be these giant game altering character arcs it's star citizen isn't really at least from my point of view it doesn't really seem to be built around that type of a narrative and it's rather player driven now some people might say oh no but i want those types of stories i like that st you know sort of thing but the truth of it is is that in an mmo these kind of single player stories are they have a a very degenerative effect on the player community when players kind of get enthralled into a story or pulled into a story they're no longer interacting with other players and it's also one of the things in the old republic that uh that drove players away from each other in the very beginning certainly because players got so dialed into playing those narratives the sith warrior the jedi knight swan and so forth that by the time they got to max level and they finished the story many of the players were in a position where it's like oh now i have to figure out how to interact with other people i've only been interacting with npcs for the last 50 55 levels and that's not the experience that star citizen is driving right they want you interacting not just with npcs but they want you interacting and dealing with other players so there may be some story elements and there may be some interesting side quests where missions like this become appropriate and some things to kind of push your character along on certain breadcrumb quests that open up through reputations that may allow you to access unique pieces of equipment but the chances of this being the bread and butter it's it, it's nil it's zero this is going to be a special occasion type of thing and not an everyday type of thing now if you were listening to tony zurovec talk 
about you know dynamic events oh there's a lot of mining going on over here so maybe there's gonna be a lot of piracy over here there's a lot of trading going on over there so maybe the prices of this are gonna go up and this are gonna go down and how the game reacts to what the players are doing one of the things that may not come immediately to mind is the fact that we're not really going to have a home base even within the confines of a star system where you know belt asteroid belt a was the great asteroid belt to hunt in yesterday now it's asteroid belt b or c and things kind of shift over time and maybe move to different star systems one star system might fall into an economic depression where it's no longer really worthwhile for you to be there. And this is when you start to confront a lot of things like physicalized inventory, having to bring things along with you. And, you know, we've, we've talked about these things many times at length, but this is that this is that reality taking shape. It's no longer escapable, obviously, in 315 and moving forward. We are now there well, we've talked about this in videos before but we are now transitioning to this point the idea of a nomadic lifestyle is something that probably a lot of players are going to have to get used to some of which you know they might say oh yeah i'm totally ready for it but look at your hangar and think how am i going to move all of this or think about your physical inventory on your character all the different guns you want to bring different armors for different environments you know we've been talking about this for a long time and here it is so even just the different types of guns and different tools that you may need to complete a mission you're gonna have to make sure that you have a ship that can carry them all when people often say that squadron 42 was inspired by Star Wars, or the inspiration for this comes from Star Wars. Um, it's true. It very much is true. But Star Citizen is not Star Wars. Star Citizen is Star Trek. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.